Today is the day. Gilligan Phantom Q&A. You have asked and I am here to answer. Nova is here to babble. Say rockabye. Oh. Okay. All right, let's just start with an easy one. John Capper asks, how tall is your bus? Okay, so John, a Gillig Phantom is actually 79 inches tall right when you walk onto the bus. The floor actually slopes up two inches over the first roughly 12 feet of the bus and then levels out for 77 inches throughout the whole bus. So 77 inches is your starting uh, ceiling height. That's without any insulation or anything like that. A Gillig is a great choice for somebody who's taller. You, there's other buses that you can get that are 77 inches. I'm gonna link to a great website to help you decide how to find a bus that works for you. I got another easy question. All right, Stuart Rose asks, how thick are the ceiling panels? Easy question. They're quarter of an inch birch. All right, Michael Lathwood asks, did I just paint the, ceil the uh, windows black? No, I didn't. I made a video about uh, how I tinted the windows. I bought a product off Amazon that's a full blackout tint. It's linked in the description below. Michael Lathwood also asked, did I lock the windows that I covered up by screwing them in place before I covered them? Really good question. Uh, no, I didn't do that. I probably should have done that. Well, that was stupid. TJ Drumminator says that he likes the music. He wants to know if we have a personal relationship with the musical artists and how we found our music. First bunch of videos, like our first 25, are pretty much all TJ Kong and the Atomic Bomb. We know them from Philadelphia, which is where we moved to South Carolina from. We've been friends with them for a long time. They played at our wedding. They played at all of our friends' weddings. They're a great band. Check them out. That link is also in the description. Our new artist, we basically ran out of all, oh, my right arm is getting tired. We basically ran out of all of the TJ Kong songs. We even used some of them twice. At least the ones that we felt worked well in the videos. So we moved on to Andrew Applepie. Andrew Applepie is a musical creator from Germany. He's probably about my age. I don't know a ton about him, but he has a Patreon account where you can pay $2 a month or more if you like to support him and his music. And then you can... You just want to talk like me, huh? A lot of YouTubers are using him. I think I found... I found his music from Live, Work, Wander. By the way, Live, Work, Wander is one of my favorite YouTube channels. It's a couple who've been traveling, um, doing like overland van life stuff for like six years. Check them out. They're also in the description. There's gonna be a lot of links down there. Oh boy. Bye, baby. On the treetop. When the wind blows, the cradle will rock. Wah. When the bell breaks, the Wah. cradle will fall. Wah. And down Wah. will come Nova, Wah. cradle and Wah. 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 <laughs> I think Nova might be getting too old for this walk thing. Yeah. You're too old for this? Yeah. Okay. Well, maybe this is one of the last times. This is basically like how I survive as a dad. Put her in the carry and start walking in circles. And um, she loves it. Don't you? No. Don't, don't, no? Don't you love it? Yeah. Uh, that's an ambiguous answer. Well. Okay, squirrel. Okay, TJ also wants to know, what is our budget for the bus? TJ, our budget for the bus, including the bus, is about $35,000. Oh man, she's upset. Is that too much money, Nova? Yeah. No, is it not enough money? No? Yeah? Really what's gonna determine the actual budget in the end is what we use for batteries. Uh, so if we end up, because you know we're trying to do a mostly all electric um, RV. Anyways, to answer your question, I think it's gonna cost us 35 and that includes the bus, and that includes the bus travel, which was like, the bus plus the travel to get it back here from California was $10,000, so 25 after that, give or take. Jay also asked, did we get any, did we make any drastic cuts to the budget, um, or did we come across any great opportunities? Yes, TJ, we did. We got all of our solar panels for free, which saved us a couple thousand dollars. That was definitely a great opportunity. I still haven't tested them or put them up. That'll come eventually, once I'm done with the woodworking. I'm gonna be working on electrical, I believe. 
And once I determine how many of those panels we're not going to keep, I'm going to be giving them away to somebody, I guess, in the southeast. Somebody who wants to drive here and get them. Um, so if you're in the southeast and if you have got like a van that might need three panels or a bus that will get away, you know, can have three panels, uh, stay tuned someday. Oh God, I'm not good at this. No, but are you sleeping finally? You're not sleeping. You're so quiet though. Okay, Rigoberto has asked if we, <laughs> I hope, I, I'm just trying to say your name authentically. I hope that's not offensive, but Rigoberto has asked if we can remove the glass from the windows or remove the windows in, there in the future to reduce the weight of the bus. Um, the weight of the bus thing is super duper not an issue. The bus is rated to carry 90-ish children that I imagine have to weigh, you know, maybe 100 pounds each. There's no way we're gonna be putting that kind of weight into the bus during this build. Um, that would be basically close to 10,000 pounds of additional materials, which is just, you know, that's not happening. All right, A to Z Sun asks, why doesn't Valo make you wear eye protection? Um, Val and I try to make each other do things, but now that we've been together for like six years, I think we're starting to realize that it's totally futile. We are both too stubborn to be micromanaged by each other. Okay, Lawrence Constantine wants to know, why do, did we choose to use wood all over everything? And why does everybody seem to use wood? Um, I think that the answer for us, and I can't speak for anybody else, is that our aesthetic for the bus is kind of like a Scandinavian mid-century plywood architectural dream. No. Uh, because I'm building it, it's uh, going to be like a very imperfect version of that, but that's, for us, that's a birch plywood look. That's just the look that we want. And uh, you know, the other thing is that um, you mentioned, Lawrence, you mentioned that there's a bunch of cheaper, lighter materials. Well, like I said earlier, we don't care about lighter. It's not relevant. And cheaper, I, I don't know. But really the big thing is um, I just go with what's available to me at my local lumber yard, which is where most materials have come for the build. And it's only like 0.3 miles away from my house. Well, this is the proof that I actually did buy a stroller, even though I said I was going to be a dad who doesn't have a stroller. Like, not for any crunchy reasons, just because I wanted to, like, um, stay in shape while carrying my baby around. And, like, 99% of the time I've done that. But we did get this for 20 bucks off Craigslist, and it's a jogger. <laughs> and she thinks it's funny. And uh, the tires are flat, so <laughs> it's not even really cruising. But anyways, enough. Jabble jabble. And I walked across the four lane highway to what I consider to be the most amazing neighborhood in the Charleston area. And that's because, bam, look at that. Just tree lined street with gorgeous, well, that's just bushes, but beautiful 1950s houses lovely resurrection ferns on the oak trees look this place it's just beautiful okay so how do we remediate the windows leaking again in the future well since i don't have any great solution for either identifying well to identify leaks <laughs> what we're gonna have to do is do like a quarterly window inspection where now that i understand exactly how the windows work I will be inspecting each of them and coating them again with GSL Pro, Pro, ProFlex. All right, DC Hub 42 also asks us, what is your target date for completion? Hmm. I'm a little bit apprehensive about giving you a target date for completion. I'll tell you what I'd like to happen. If we can finish this bus before summer 2019, 
That would be great. Okay. So that's oh, fine. That's the target date. So I do want to make an extra note about um, timeline. Uh, so I don't know if I've mentioned this before, but basically, um, so my my job is um, firefighter. So I work 24 hours on and 48 hours off. Um, during the 48 hours off that I uh, that Val is at work, I take care of the baby. So, I actually thought I was gonna get to be able to work on the bus somehow with the baby at the same time when I bought it. That was stupid. <laughs> and of course we have to li keep living our normal lives, which is, uh, you know, bus work's gonna get interrupted by lots of things. Uh, holidays, weddings, we've been to three weddings this fall, so we missed three weekends. Um, all kinds of other stuff, man. And uh, like I am gung ho to work on the bus. Like I will just do nothing but work on the bus. But that's not really what's best for the family. So that's not what happens, even though that's what I'd like to happen sometimes. So the, oh, let's watch the school bus go past. Look now where the school bus is. High school bus. Just look at this place. It's just so incredible. I also have a bunch of side hustles, <laughs> which are, um, they're, they're designed to not take up too much work. They're basically real estate based. Um, I'll tell you guys all about that in the future if you want me to, uh, but I've got to manage them. Um, one thing is I'm a, I have my real estate license. I am not a realtor. I didn't pay those dues. Right, so basically, um, after all that's said and done, I have about um, two weekend days a week to work on the bus. So, uh, and those are generally eight hour days. And uh, so that means 16 hours a week to work on the bus. So I was expecting to have like close to twice that. And so my original timeline was maybe a year, um, but now it's two years or hopefully, no, hopefully like 18 months. We'll see. DC Hub also asks, what's the plan once we're done building the bus? I can't really tell you the plan because it's ever evolving. So I will tell you this. Number one, we will live in the bus. For how long or where? I'm not exactly sure. Number two, we will travel in the bus. Number three, the bus will somehow be used to earn us at some point in its lifetime short-term rental income. I can tell you this for sure. When the bus is done, we're gonna live in it. By the way, DC Hub, if you wanna get a drink, we'd love to. So, gilliganphantom at gmail.com. You can feel free to get in touch and then we'll sort that out. Wow. Look at this place. All right, so we got a question from John Kulari, who I now know is working on his own bus. John noted that we don't, we didn't install a Max Air fan. I am wondering if I'm gonna regret that because <clears throat> Um, I haven't, as of yet, figured out a way to like really ventilate the bus while it's raining. Because, oh my gosh, guys, I forgot. There's a mini horse in this neighborhood. Look at this guy. Nova, look at the horse. Hey, mini horse. So cute. So cute. So if I, if we, we're gonna start out with the passive ventilation from the hatches and we're gonna put box fans up there um, to kind of act as ventilation fans. And if we find that we really do need a max air, we're gonna cut them, we're gonna cut one or two in next to the hatches. And I suppose I'll have to run little 12 volt, well, I'll figure out how to fix the, that mistake if it ends up being a mistake. When it happens, I'm not gonna worry about it too much. But yes, um, John also asked, are we gonna do a mini split? Yes, we're gonna do two mini splits. We're gonna do two. 12,000. Actually, I shouldn't say, all right, we're gonna do one mini split. We probably will do two. If we don't do two, we're gonna do a portable air conditioner heater. Okay. Um, and that's just because it's a little bit more flexible than having a mini split. I'll explain that again in future videos. Oh yeah, by the way, John, we would love to visit you in Atlantic City someday. If you can fit our 40 foot bus in your driveway in Atlantic City, we will definitely come visit you. Zizang Young asks, what's your job? 
Oh, I'm a firefighter. Um, and my wife is a nanny to three sweet little girls. Guys, I love this house with its awesome garage studio thing in the back. I'm just like a sucker for houses. I love houses. I love building. I love alternative dwellings. Um, okay, so for me, I've always been like really obsessed with alternative dwellings. And so that's kind of my motivation, my own personal motivation for wanting to live in a school bus. It kind of happened by accident. That was basically all of the questions that we got. We got a few questions that I'm not gonna answer right now, which were kind of technical electrical questions. I'm gonna do a big video about electrical stuff when we get to that. So I'll tell you more about that in the future. Thank you guys so much for asking your questions. Give this video a thumbs up if you like it and share it with your friends who are also converting buses or who just like to watch bus conversion videos because I know I do. And uh, hit that subscribe button that's gonna show up in a circle with the Gilligan Phantom bus in it right over there. Bye.